can you legally mod your games console? That is a very grey area, but it's a question which has been coming up quite a lot recently since I uploaded a video on YouTube where I had a Nintendo Switch Lite in for repair and it had a HW Fly mod installed. That's this thing here. It's a little flex PCB with a few chips and components on it. And essentially what this mod does is it allows you to run unsigned code. It allows you to install custom firmware amongst other things, which, you know, I'm not giving away any trade secrets here. It allows you to play pirated games. So the question that keeps coming up and what people keep saying is that it is entirely legal to install these mods on your device. And while technically that is somewhat true, number one, it is very country specific. So it depends on where you're from. Some countries may allow it, some countries may not. I can't give an answer to that because I don't know where everyone's from. In the UK and the US at least, and as far as I know in the EU as well, it is perfectly legal to mod your console unless you're using it to bypass slash circumvent security. So if you're modifying code to allow the use of unauthorized games or unauthorized software, that is 100% no questions asked illegal. However, if you're using it just to be able to run homebrew, for example, your own code or your friend's code, which you've got permission to use, part of the homebrew community where it's released under the uh, open source license agreement and things like that, then yes, you are absolutely allowed to use these mods. Now, take me for example. I have a Nintendo Switch. It's a normal Nintendo Switch, but it is a early firmware or an early release Nintendo Switch where you could enter into recovery mode and basically install custom firmware without the need for one of these chips. Now, I actually modded my console, but only to upgrade to a 256 gigabyte chip. I don't use it for any privacy or anything like that. I've got the standard operating system on there. All I use it for is to be able to upgrade the internal storage from 32 gigabyte to 256. So that allows more internal storage. Now, take for example, a few consoles I've seen in the past where I will turn it on after I've repaired it and it's got literally stacks of games installed and they're all digital and it's exploited. So obviously that's not my problem. But there are people who obviously use them for you know nefarious reasons. There's people who use them for uh, piracy and things like that and that is what is illegal about modding. So the company cannot stop you from, for example, taking your PlayStation 5 and throwing it into an Xbox case, if you really want to, if you can make it fit. What they can stop you doing is obviously using it for privacy. So you can do anything you want in terms of the hardware, as long as you don't mess with the code to circumvent the security. So for example, on the PlayStation 5, there's an issue with the BIOS chip, where if the BIOS chip fails, or it becomes corrupt, the console won't turn on. It won't even attempt to turn on. Or sometimes you'll get three beeps when you first turn the console on and that's it, and it's just dead. So basically what I did was I created a tool which allows you to program a new BIOS with original code, but just with the serial number that matches that device. And that is perfectly legal because it's not circumventing security. All it's doing is allowing the console to be repaired and allowing it to boot up and work again. It's still using the original firmware, it's still using the original code, it's still got all of the original security checks in place to ensure that the games and the software that are being used, you have the authority to do so. So the, the issue here is the code, not the hardware. The hardware is yours, you can do what you want with it. So technically, yes, you can install this mod chip on a Nintendo Switch, but you just can't run any illegal software, any illegal games on it. That is the short answer to it, but obviously it does, you know, it does get a little bit deeper than that. For example, it's country specific. So I know that in the UK, you can do all of what I said previously, same as the US. And as far as I'm aware, you can do it in the EU as well. Now, bear in mind, I will say this is not legal advice. I am not a legal advisor. Take this for what it is. I'm just trying to give a bit of insight as to my understanding of the law. Now, talking of the law, 
I run a business, I run a electronic repair uh, well service, I don't run a shop, I work from home and I only accept mail in repairs. If I get a device in which has been modified in a way where it can potentially allow the use of unsigned code, I can work on that device absolutely fine. Not an issue. I can I can legally work on that device, send it back to the customer with the mod chip installed. However, if I have to remove the mod chip for any reason, doesn't matter what it's for, if I have to remove that mod chip, I cannot legally put that back on. I cannot offer that as a service. I've had so many people message me in the past asking me if I can install mods, and I've probably turned down tens of thousands of pounds because I won't do it because I'm not going to risk my business and my freedom and my family's livelihood for the sake of money. I can earn money in other ways. I can earn money on YouTube. I can earn money doing repairs. I can earn money selling parts on my online store. All of that sort of stuff, I've got multiple ways that I can earn money and I'm not going to risk it for the sake of a stupid mod. Find someone else to do it because that is illegal. And I do actually know someone who used to work with Xbox 360s when RGH was a big thing and I do know someone personally who actually got caught doing that by trading standards and he was fined £10,000 and shut down. He didn't go to prison but he was fined £10,000 and he was shut down. He was told that if he ever did it again he would end up in prison and I've personally been to prison for piracy. That is something I've discussed in another video, I'm not going to discuss it here but I have served time for piracy. Granted it wasn't for you know this sort of thing and sorry about the fly that's flying around. Uh, it wasn't for this sort of thing, it wasn't for modding consoles or anything like that, it was for movie piracy. I'm not going to get into it, I've discussed it all before, it's a part of my life which is behind me but basically I've already served time for piracy. I'm pretty sure if I ever got caught doing this I would get a lot longer than I got the first time. I would probably get five, six, seven years and yes they would do it just to make an example. I've learned from that mistake and it's not something that I'm going to be willing to do. But from a legal standpoint, you cannot modify the software. You can do what you want with the hardware. I can cut that board in half, run a thousand jumper wires and have one half of the board over there and the other half over there. If it works, it works. I can do whatever the hell I want. It's my hardware. I own the hardware. What you're doing when you sign up to the... Uh, user account so when you create a user account you're signing up to a EULA an end user license agreement EULA and basically in that end user license agreement it will clearly state on 99% of devices that you cannot modify the software or code that runs the system and basically that is the bottom line the issue isn't with the hardware it's with the software if you are just running unsigned code, then technically you're not modifying it or you're not modifying it to exploit it in terms of privacy. You can't use any unauthorized apps, but you can use obviously Homebrew, you can install a different operating system. So for example, on some MacBooks, people used to install Windows and vice versa, people used to install Mac OS on a Windows device and things like that, that's perfectly legal. You can do what the hell you want as long as you're not circumventing the security. So let's say, for example, I was to take this MacBook right here and I was to install a modified version of the software and that software allowed me to bypass iCloud. I'm circumventing security. If I install this mod chip on a Nintendo Switch and that mod chip allows me to run the pirated games, I'm circumventing security. If I was to install an RGB mod on a PlayStation 5, which is exactly what I've got down there, I can do that. If I were to install a 256, 256 gig NAND on a Nintendo Switch because I just want more storage, I can do that. So I hope this clears it up a little bit. You can legally mod your console if it's for the right reasons. You can't legally mod it if it's for the wrong reasons. That's going to be it for now. My name is Dakota. I'm an electronics technician. If that's the sort of stuff you're into, don't forget to get subscribed, turn on the bell notifications, all of that jazz, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.